So that uh, Xbox pre-order thing was going on today. Mm -hmm. Series X, Series S, don't you forget it. And uh, they had their own, it was kind of like the PlayStation thing. Bit of a fiasco. Yep. It was the same. I saw people tweeting with their screenshots. I got it. I didn't, a lot more, I didn't get it. A lot more website crashed. The Microsoft website itself showing sold out for a period of time. This next gen gaming stuff. People are going wild. Well, they only have one chance to you know, pre-order on launch day. Best Buy, GameStop, day. Microsoft Store, all suffering issues. Walmart suffering issues, experiencing issues. Actually, it looks like Walmart might be the best spot at the time. They're the least amount of issues and reports on the downdetector.com getting smashed with the pre-orders. Now, obviously, I don't know which of the two consoles is more popular what do we have to go on if you can knock down all the sites i guess it's a lot of interest mm -hmm. and weirdly they the way they lined it up playstation was originally supposed to go later but who was supposed to go second was microsoft always expecting to go second it's an odd play i've been, I've been thinking about the strategy here mm. do you want to go first or second for the pre-orders me? Yeah, um, you. If you're Microsoft or you're Sony, do you want to go first or second? I would say first. You want to go first, first. right? Yeah. Because uh, you look, you, you can buy it right now. Mm -hmm. Our competitors are are late on this, right? So yeah, I mean, it's only a day, but I guess it, I guess that it matters. Uh, either way, it doesn't appear to have affected the demand here. Uh, the Series S, I think, a lot of people interested in that because of the low price point. So whether they go first or second on that, if you only had two ninety nine to spend, you were waiting for this pre-order anyways. Maybe there's more crossover than we think. Maybe there's more people that are getting both of these, Will, mm -hmm. because they're so into gaming in 2020. Mm -hmm. It's all about the next generation. We'll do a quick update for you. Let's check a couple places. Let's, uh, let's see what's going on. What is, what is Microsoft saying? Are they in stock? Can we pre-order right now? We do a live check on this. This is, of course, a little bit later. All right, he clicks the pre-order button. Select a retailer, okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay, so Microsoft website out of stock. He has Amazon, the pre-order button, Best Buy pre-order, Walmart, EB Games. Of course, we're in Canada. That would be GameStop in the U.S. Try Amazon. Let's see what Amazon says. Redirection to the retailer. Unavailable. Mm -hmm. We're cooked everywhere, man. Let's see what Best Buy says. We're so cooked. You're not getting this thing. It's such a crazy effect. Once you can't get it, you want it so much more. Sold and shipped, can't add it to cart. You're not adding it to cart. No. Out of stock, not available, no add. It's wild. Yeah, I remember um, when the clock hit 11 a.m., I tried to go to the Best Buy site, and uh, it crashed. Yeah. The whole site crashed. Yeah. I mean, it, like I said, IGN went in there, and they actually were tracking on Down Detector. The site's going down. Yeah. Apparently, Walmart was the best for not going down. Maybe, was there a Walmart link there? Yeah. yeah, try Walmart. Let's see. Maybe they're still taking orders. But the same thing happened with the PlayStation, where eventually they all just had to stay out of stock. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, did everyone misjudge this? Or is this just part of the gig? Is this just how it goes? Did retailers fully expect it, go with it, and then that's it? Yeah. Or maybe they're just selling 100 units. Worldwide. Keep it low just to increase yeah. it. Yeah, I don't just know. Increase the hype. We don't know. We don't get to see what's actually out there and what their tar what the numbers are immediately. We'll find out at a later date. But nonetheless, people are really interested. You know what it is? Well, maybe all the people who couldn't get the PS5 pre-order as well, mm. and they were feeling angry about it, they jumped on this one right away, mm -hmm. and then they boomed that one as well. I don't really know, but the point, the fact of the matter is, these are not going to be easy to get. You're going to see the resellers. You're going to have the whole thing going on this holiday season. You're going to have the parents out there driving around, doing uh, weird Craigslist meetups, overpaying, ordering on eBay, trying to be Santa Claus. Yeah. And it's the same thing over again. It's going to be like, uh, what, Turbo Man with Arnold Schwarzenegger? <laughs> Remember? No. 
Turbo Man. Like they try to get like this high. Vin just yelled. He just screamed uh, jingle all the toy. way. He just screamed jingle all oh, the yeah, way. Oh yeah, jingle all the way. Yeah, that's the thing. Turbo Man's a toy. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you could have said tickle me Elmo, which that that's was a, a big real thing. Yeah, that was I, in real I life. It was yeah. a big. That was a big deal. But yeah, let's see if anyone. Well, let's see if anyone's posting anything on eBay about this stuff. Series X. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Brand new. Uh, from the source pre-order. So people are already okay. selling the pre-orders at a markup. Now, it's not a huge markup, but it's a markup. Pre-sale, mm -hmm. order confirmed, you know, around 760 bucks, uh, yeah. which is about a $200 increase on the Canadian price tag of $599 for the Series X. So there's a little markup going on already. This, of course, gets worse. The closer you get to Christmas, people get desperate. The kids are asking for it and... Paying yeah. five grand for that thing. Jingle all the way, Willie do. Yeah. Today's episode of Lou Later is brought to you by LG and the laptop, more specifically, that I've been using for the show for the last month almost. This uh, is, to my knowledge, the thinnest and lightest 17-inch laptop on the planet, the LG Gram. Like I said, months worth of activity. One thing that I like about it, it has the slightly taller screen for me. Sometimes a bit more productive as opposed to the uh, ultra wide models that are out there, especially in the 17 inch, you know, with the gaming laptops and so forth. Uh, they have a deal right now. You can head down to the link in the description here. It's been in a number of videos. The the link, uh, it's a bit.ly link. You can click it and it will take you to this page here where you'll see, you'll see savings on this model. I, I believe up to 150, maybe $200. What are the savings, Jack? Maximum savings? Up to 250. Sheesh. Anyway, this thing is so stupid light, you will pick this up and be shocked. Hmm. If you walked over here right now, Will, you'd be, you'd be saying, where's the laptop? It's that light. So if you're a student, if you travel a lot, and you still you want the big display for productivity, but you don't want the weight that's typically associated with a 17-inch laptop, this is one way to do it. But of course, they make other sizes as well, 15, 13. So go check out the website. Check out the LG Gram. And shout out to LG for sponsoring the episode we have some pixel 5 stuff i don't know is this even new this thing has been leaked and leaked so much well mm -hmm. everything is leaking uh but there's an event coming up and it's on the 30th of september this, this event's coming up real quick uh official pixel 5 renders have now leaked what haven't we seen these shots before uh Yes. Okay, but I guess they're official now. You got the background on there. We have some specs as well. And I think these specs leaked also, but we're just we just continue to sort of confirm what's going to take place here. Uh, additional information and fills out other details. 6-inch 90 hertz display, 432 PPI, 19.5 by 9 aspect ratio protected by Gorilla Glass 6, which is a one generation up upgrade from the Pixel 4. You have a maybe more narrow than expected bottom bezel on the Pixel 5. The housing is going to be made of 100% recycled aluminum with IP68 water dust resistance. I thought at one point some were speculating it might be made out of plastic, so that's an interesting development, I suppose. Hmm. 4,080 milliamp hour battery, not a huge battery on there, with wireless charging and reverse wireless charging support. Also, you're going to have a 107 degree field of view wide angle camera at 16 megapixels and the same 12.2 megapixel main camera as before. You can shoot 4K, 60 FPS. Uh, and like almost none of this is surprising. We know it's not going to be a flagship competitor because it's going to pack the 765G from Snapdragon, 8 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage. I don't know how much that matters. In fact, I've talked on this show previously about how I think it's a smart move for them to approach the mid-range price-wise mm -hmm. instead of going up. You know, it's so difficult at the top end. You've got so many players. Samsung's doing what they're doing. I'm folding the phone in my pocket right now. Yeah, I'm fo I fold it. I put it away. I get so much attention with the folding. People, huh. I'm wearing the mask in the street, and they still approach. They say, is that the folding one? Yeah. Let hey there, that. sir. Just is that that away. folder? Yeah. Happened to me today. The folder. It was an older lady. She saw me across the way. She said, is that the folding phone? I watched a review on that. I oh. said, excuse me. Oh. It was an older it was an older lady. Hmm. Didn't expect it. Uh, sometimes I'm tapping in the drive-thru. I'm tapping for yeah. the payment. 
because I'm a big Samsung Pay guy. Yeah. I mean, we've gone over it. Yeah. And they say, what is that, two phones stuck together? That's what somebody said to me. I said, no, 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 no. I went, psh, psh. I said, that's what it sounded like. And they were like, wow. Yeah. That's the effect Fair you get off. with the folding thing. Man, I got to say, Will, just a quick side note. Mm. I never expected to be this into the folding device. Really? I never expected it, and, I, and, and, and now I am. Hmm. I am into the folding device. Maybe I'll make a video upstairs, a real sit down, let's talk about what's going on, because I think we're getting close. Okay. We're getting close right now. Yeah. Anyway, Pixel 5, we'll find out more. Price is going to be really important. September 30th, we may or may not live stream the event. We also have a price, speaking of prices, on this guy. You remember this one? Remember that one? That's the the wing with the crazy mechanism. Bang, 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 bang. You know what I'm talking about? Sliding, very addictive, very addictive mechanism. Two hundred thousand opens and closes. By the way, in case you were wondering, uh, we were really curious about the price point on this thing because it's not exactly a foldable, but presumably it would be more expensive than a typical phone because you have this mechanism and the secondary display. Uh, we have a sort of confirmation from Phone Arena. I believe they've done a type of a conversion, and we were curious about this because the conversion actually put the price closer to a thousand. But rumors were saying if it did, when it did come to the U.S., it would actually be more like eight hundred, mm. and that's essentially where this one, uh, this lines up for an official U.S. price point of anywhere between eight hundred and one thousand. However, this writer on Phone Arena says he's. Pretty certain now in predicting the phone will not break the one thousand dollar psychological barrier, which I think as well it's it's it is a key. A thousand dollars. You go over, you add that extra digit on the end there. It's mm. geez, man, I gotta save up for that. I think being below that is a big deal. Yes. And especially when you you, you compare it to non non folding devices, devices like the new note. I got the new note right over here. I could just reach and grab different phones. It's the beauty of it. They're all everything's around. That one's over there. That one. Anyway, this thing you're gonna spend more than that. And it's not doing any fancy activities. Great phone nonetheless. Mm -hmm. You have a great time on this thing. It's no problemo. But it doesn't do any of the fancy activities. So now you can get yourself a fancy activity phone without a fancy activity price. Because all the other fancy activity phones, you're looking well, I mean, with the Surface Duo, you go to around fifteen hundred, yeah. fourteen, fifteen hundred. With obviously with the Z Fold two, you go to two Gs. Yeah. What Huawei put out with the Mate stuff, two Gs. Uh, the Motorola Razor product, two Gs, fifteen, mm. fifteen hundred. It's a lot of cash, man. Yeah. So if you want to be a part of this futuristic, my phone is not a slab, and you can do so for eight hundred. That's something. Uh huh. It's not a foldable, but it's something. It's nice that they put uh, innovation in such a smaller price. Now, part, part of part of what was helpful there, they went with the Snapdragon 765 as well. They didn't get too crazy on the specs. 8 gigs RAM, 128 storage, 4,000 milliamp hour battery. But you're definitely going to turn some heads with that one. You're going to get the same, you know, the, the lady who was talking to me earlier. If I'm doing this, it's a, is that the... Is that a twofer? Is that the one? <laughs> you're still going to get some of that action. Yeah. Speaking of getting some action... Flex Pi, the ro the royal 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 Flex Pi is the back first one with the Flex Pi Flex Pi two. Yeah, th weren't they the first foldable? Like uh, to show off. And they were the first in a smartphone package. The first we got here for sure. Yeah, and probably the first I saw, which I believe was at CES. CES yeah. Uh, this one costs under fifteen hundred. I mean, this one is still expensive. It's very similar in layout to their previous version, but they claim to have you know, fixed certain things. This takes advantage of the company's latest OLED panel for the outward facing flexible screen. This one is different because when it's folded up, it's still pretty wide. Mm. It's a different approach than what's going on with the Samsung product, which gets narrow, more like a typical smartphone stacked on top of itself in the folded mode. This is still, that's a giant smartphone even when it's folded. Uh, this thing, I think it just, it was just announced. It's going to be available. It's available right now on Royals website and JD.com. No, it's not. It's on the 25th, September 25th at 10 a.m. Oh. Base model, 8 gigs RAM, 256 storage. That'll be $1,470 converted from Chinese currency. Available in three colors, cosmic gray, midnight, black, sunrise, gold. Uh, it's also going to have a Snapdragon 865 in it. 
and the display is enormous 7.8 inches 1920 by 1440 it'll have stereo speakers that is one of the weirdest and most pleasant things about the fold the z fold 2 the speakers are wild they're good eh and people are you know maybe you're out there thinking well i just put the headphones anyways but i don't feel the need to put the headphones i'm watching videos and i'm still blown away with the speakers i guess there's a little extra space in there samsung spent a little extra time it's real stereo when you have it in landscape it's an incredible experience i'm talking a lot about this Hmm. phone i just realized anyway when it's folded on the other hand you have a 5.5 inch main screen so that's quite a bit bigger what royal's gonna do with it uh i don't know how compelling this is there were some issues with the original one i still don't i'm i'm nervous about the outward folding design where the screen is still exposed and it folds like sort of backwards hmm. which is what the the mate x did from yep. huawei and i I never got a long-term sample of that here in the studio. I made a video, but then it had to go back. And so it was, there were some nerves and yeah. apprehension about having the screen exposed all the time, the soft screen, the flexible screen, mm -hmm. which is, I always had a little more confidence in the Samsung approach, which was to close that up mm -hmm. and then have a typical smartphone screen exposed on the outside, mm -hmm. which was glass and more durable. But it's, there is the downside here. We have a small screen when you want to interact quickly. And that's what the backwards folding thing is attempting to, to uh, fix. But I don't know if the trade-off there is worthwhile. And I don't know. It's kind of hard to recommend spending $1,500 on the Royal product when you could spend a little more on the Samsung product. I'm just putting that out there. And the, the name, though. I'm like just putting that out there. I'm just saying. Yeah. Uh, it's also going to have a 4450 milliamp hour battery. So that's kind of nice. Pretty big battery over there. Uh, 5G enabled, and uh, it's it can last 200,000 bends, supposedly it's been tested for. So that's actually the exact same number as the spinning display on the LG Wing, mm. interestingly enough. Microsoft will apparently honor Bethesda's PS5 exclusives, but future console releases will be case by case. How crazy is this? They buy the parent company of Bethesda, for $7.5 billion. And in the exchange, they're purchasing essentially two titles which are slated for PS5 exclusive releases. Mm -hmm. These two games, Deathloop and Ghostwire, were being developed by them. However, they were going to come out only on PS5. So now Microsoft is, in effect publishing games they're one of their companies a company under their umbrella is publishing games only for their competitor yeah strange but you had to I guess know this deal happened before right the exclusive deal absolutely yeah yeah and you had to know when you heard about the scale and the scope of the acquisition that there was the potential for this crossover they're working on so many things of course, yes. this variety of developers under the umbrella of the parent company which also owns bethesda and so people immediately started thinking, wait, did those get canceled? Does Microsoft have the ability to drop those games right, or, right away to hurt their competitor? I don't think that would be a smart move, obviously. Mm. I think you follow through with the work and you just increase, make a better name for yourself when you go and start to approach exclusives in the future that are only going to be on, right. on Microsoft's side, on PC or Xbox. So they said that in the meantime, uh, let's see the official here. Phil Spencer says Xbox plans to honor the P PS5 exclusivity commitment for Deathloop and Ghostwire. And I don't know, maybe maybe contractually they have to honor that. Yeah, uh, That's what I thought right away. Can you even come in and sever those things right away? That would be complicated because you already agreed to deliver the goods. Yeah. So signed. It's, a, it's a pretty interesting, it's almost a conundrum they find themselves. Uh, there's some other stuff here that uh, that should make people... Also, people could get mad. Customers could get mad. They could say, you made this commitment, and I don't care if you have a competing thing. I expected to play my thing on the pre-order that I already had because the PlayStation pre-order went live before this acquisition, right? Right, yeah. It's kind of cra crazy stuff. Uh, also, I've there's been questions around Elder Scrolls, which is oh, a, yeah, a big. big Bethesda game with Very the cool. online stuff. And uh, the game will continue to be supported exactly as it was. And we fully expect it to keep growing and thriving on each of the platforms that are currently supported. So it will leave no platforms. And uh, it will be continue to be maintained 
on PS4, Xbox One, PC, Mac, and Stadia. So if there's any Elder Scrolls online players out there that were uh, concerned about losing their ability to access that game after the Microsoft acquisition, you don't need to be concerned either. So it sounds like they're going to play nice. Right. It sounds like they're going to do the right thing here and work on those potential exclusives. I hope they're new franchises. I hope that these groups go to work on thinking up new things and, mm -hmm. and continue to maintain the old ones which have built up audiences on all the platforms. Yep. Just my opinion. Have you been following this Spotify news? The Spotify, you know, I was, we kind of covered it very uh, gently when we were talking about Spotify being under attack from the major players, from the big dogs, from the Amazons and the Apples putting out these really competitive products that are coming directly at Spotify in their business. And now there's war inside. Now they got the inside problems. Yeah. And of course, uh, full disclosure, it's involving Joe Rogan. I've been on his podcast a number of times. And uh, I, I listened to his podcast, obviously, mm -hmm. and I was following the news when he signed the deal with Spotify in the first place. And a lot of people had questions about how this deal would go down, what kind of uh, arrangement would be made, what would exist in the contract, and what would he be continuing to do on his show, and would that be impacted in any way? Now, kn knowing him personally, I didn't, I wouldn't expect the show to change or for him to sign a deal that would drastically change the show he, right. he he likes it the way that it is yeah. and so do a lot of people obviously yes i mean the numbers are kind of there mm -hmm. so if you're going to sign a deal with spotify you gotta you're gonna have to have a piece in there that gives you some kind of autonomy some kind of uh, editorial control over what you choose to publish however that doesn't change the fact that when you sign a deal with a big company you become maybe one of the faces of that company yeah that that the the members of that company, the employees of the co that company, have a right to feel whichever way they want to feel, mm -hmm. and that's what's happening right now. Is that it turns out that some people inside of Spotify feel alienated by controversial uh, jo uh, Rogan podcast moments and guests and and things like this, and and so the word is and the report is that it's kind of a. a a war going on inside of Spotify where some people want editorial control over his podcast saying, we need to listen to it first. We need to be able to edit something out. If it's a, a fact that's wrong, or if it's, I don't know, something we dis disagree with. I don't even, it's not an official proposal. It's just reports coming from the inside. In fact, uh, someone claiming to be an employee of Spotify showed up, shows up anonymously in some message board what is that, 4chan? If you scroll down, you, you probably know where that is. It doesn't look like Reddit. <laughs> what is that, 4chan or something? I think it might be 4chan. Anyway, so you take it for what it's worth, but it says Spotify employee here. Our New York office is in full uproar against Joe Rogan. The New York office handles most of the media and the Stockholm office. It's a uh, company based in Sweden, obviously, as you know, Will. Handles most of the tech. The CEO told them that He'll stay on the platform, and now the New York office wants to go on strike. Mm. So it's turned into a whole thing. And, I mean, if this is to be believed, it's turned into a whole thing. And I'm just kind of, I'm hoping that inside of the agreement that, that, that Joe signed with Spotify, that he has the control necessary to make the editorial decisions, the guest decisions, and all these things without them being involved. I'm fairly certain that's the way the deal would be structured regardless. But the reason I think it's important is because that show has acted as such a such a wonderfully strange concoction of a variety of guests from all over the place. Yep. And there's something about the format, mm -hmm. the three-hour-long or two-hour-long conversation, which grants you an opportunity to uh, in, engage with an individual in many cases where that level of access would never be granted to you yep. elsewhere in traditional media, yep. where things are heavily edited, produced, uh, you know, polished up, looked mm -hmm. over by a corporate entity and all those other pieces that come in and they just, they, you want to tinker with it. Yeah. For this, it's just two people talking. It's for two a people long talking. Of time. And, and, and I understand philosophically there's people on all sides of this as far as whether or not 
someone who they disagree with should be granted a platform. A platform is the thing that always gets, oh, Joe gave a platform to this person who I disagree with. It's okay. It's fine to disagree. I don't prescribe normally to the to the uh, idea that a person should be removed from the conversation completely. Mm -hmm. I think there's other problems that arise if you attempt to just erase someone and say they don't deserve to speak. I think you people can speak, and then those that listen uh, have to come to their dr – draw their own conclusions, and hopefully those individuals – are willing to do a little bit more research or look into alternative sources if they care enough in the first place. Mm -hmm. To decide who gets to talk and not talk, to me, is a, is a very difficult position and role. And, and I mean, it's impossible. It's actually, I think it would be impo yeah. an impossible thing to govern. Now, there have been guests in the past that on their own channels have completely gone overboard. And there have, they, there have been guests and online personalities that have been reprimanded by the platforms. Mm -hmm. And so there, this is totally gray zone. There is no, uh, it's not a black and white approach to it. But yes. I, when I'm speaking of my impression of the thing, I'm just talking more in general terms. Assuming nobody has said anything absolutely catastrophic or yes. horrendous to a point where there's been some real damage done to people. Mm -hmm. And I understand this is, it's, it's very slippery. I understand what I'm saying is slippery. I would just hate to lose the free flow nature, the yes. open dialogue, the willingness to invite people who you really don't have a chance to know. The, there's so many examples of episodes where it's like, wow, that's, that's that guy. And one thing I've felt about his platform over the years is that it also exposes people. The thing about a three-hour-long conversation unformatted is who you are is who you are. Yeah, you can't there. hide it. Yes. Because it's literally just two people talking. And, and when you look at the type of content we typically engage with online, which is edited, which is formatted, often the individual gets to really craft how they want you to perceive them. Mm -hmm. But in real life, when you have a relationship with someone, it's based on an extended number of, of hours of engagement mm -hmm. over time that you start to determine, okay, who is that person really? Not what do they want me to see, mm -hmm. which is the edited version of it. So in a way, this platform exposes the people who don't have much to stand on in the first place. And then it also gives a proper microphone to those that, that deserve it. It does it all. Of course, like anything else, there's benefits and drawbacks to that. But I hope that that piece can remain, and maybe these, maybe these, uh, maybe this Spotify thing can get sorted out, and it can happen there. Mm -hmm. Or if it if it absolutely can't happen there, then hopefully they can, it can happen somewhere. That's all I'm gonna say on the matter. That's my my well pos my position on it. Uh, we have some, we have a Reliance update, uh, an Ambani update. You know because. This guy keeps pulling pulling major strings in India, sort of mapping out the future of what's going to happen there from a technological perspective. There's been billions of dollars of investment and partnerships and handshakes with many of the, well, not, not I mean, the biggest players in the tech space are interested in, interesting, interested in partnering with him to tackle the remaining uh, potential users in India who are not on smartphones yet. Mm. And, of course, the way to do that is to have a budget smartphone unlike anything you've ever seen. A budget smartphone at an even lower price. I know you think, well, budget smartphone's like 200 bucks. Mm -hmm. Maybe you even think a budget smartphone is 100 bucks. I'll tell you what, Will. You want to get everybody online? You need to be at 50 bucks. 50. Yeah, and, that's the magic number. And that's where they're going. Apparently, Reliance Industries has asked local suppliers to ramp up production capacity in India to make as many as 200 million smartphones over the next two years with a target price of 4,000 rupees, which is $54. Hmm. And Google appears to be involved and interested. I don't know what happens with the OS. Is it a stock OS? I don't know if this can even be further subsidized because of the fact that they're also running the telcos hmm. with Geo. Mm-hmm. 
but $54 for a potentially Google branded or cross branded Reliance Google device is very aggressive. Yeah. And tough to deal with. You have the geo networks and then you have the phone and it's an all in one package. It's an all in one package. You know what's crazy about this, Will? Just to just put that number in perspective, like 200 million $50 phones uh. in two years. In uh, India assembled an estimated 165 million smartphones in the year ending in March. 165 total. You want to go to 200 million in the next two years of your smartphone. It's huge. In this country, we got 35 million people. In the United States, you have uh, 350 million people. You're talking about making 200 million phones mm -hmm. in two years. Where do you start? Holy moly. Now you start to see where that investment money has to go and why you're looking to accumulate billions of dollars in investment from the likes of Google and others mm -hmm. because it ain't easy to just go out there and get everybody working mm -hmm. unless you can pay for it. Yeah. And pay for it big. Yep. 200 million times 50. That's a lot. <laughs> 200 million times 50. Sheesh. Anyway, exciting times. I hope what they're able to do through this partnership is truly deliver a half decent experience because of course that would be the concern at 50 bucks yeah i'm they're, guessing like they're going to use android one that would be ideal i hope that's what they do mm -hmm. i hope they use android one software as part of the deal and don't fog it up too much yeah with bloatware and things like that so that you can actually have a half decent experience with a 50 dollars smartphone this will be bring a tremendous number of new users onto the internet via fast mobile connection. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Okay, last one for me for today. It looks like the uh, the Taycan is doing pretty well. Actually, that's of course the new Porsche electric vehicle. And we have some numbers from Europe for August of 2020 showcasing new registrations for, well, Porsche vehicles. And it, it kind of stacks them all against each other with the Taycan at the very top, all the way down to the Panamera at the very bottom. Now you look at this list and you might be thinking to yourself, well, it's a new car, whatever. Mm -hmm. The cool part of the comparison as Electrek points out is the Taycan versus the Panamera. Cause it's the most close, it's the most closely related in terms of the layout of the car. It's a four door, it's a sedan. They're both very fast performance vehicles. The only difference or the major difference between the two would be the electric component versus the gasoline. And if you look at the Panamera, it's down 71% for new registrations in August for a total of 278 units. The Taycan is at 1,183 new units, way bigger, putting it at the top of the list. Hmm. It's bigger than the 911, bigger than the Cayenne, bigger than the Macan, and bigger than the 718. Now, if you do combine the two Cayenne models, the coupe and the other one, you you would have a bigger number than total than the Taycan totals, but it would be very close. Mm. And so that's big news. It's big news. It shows that people are interested in EVs, not just from Tesla. Mm -hmm. And it shows that uh, even if the EV is a premium vehicle with a very expensive price tag, which it is, it's pro it's the most expensive. Well, I I don't know on average. It's likely the most expensive the way people spec it of the whole list. So what happens when companies like Porsche and VW and others are able to deliver similar tech at the lower price points? What happens to the volume and, and what is it capable of? Or if even if Porsche could deliver it in the Cayenne model, do an electric version of that. Mm. Because as you can see, the Cayenne Coupe also kind of boosted up quite a bit. It's up 29% and it's a more popular vehicle in general when compared to the sedans from Porsche. So good news for EVs where we've actually got the battery day event going on right now with Tesla. I think it's streaming live at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. Which is kind of wild. Look at right that now. timing. So anyway, yeah, the future is happening. The future is now it's looking up for EVs and uh, we're going to have a Taycan video very soon as well. Mm -hmm. So be ready.